Hey everyone, this is Mike. So today we're going to talk about um, applying a lot of the techniques that I've been talking about in schools. Um, I had actually written a, uh, a book or more of a booklet. Uh, I'll put the link in the uh, description about how to apply CBT and positive psychology, etc., to kids. I mean, because the idea is this: um, imagine from the time a kid was young, in elementary school, even preschool, and they're learning in an age-appropriate way to not engage in negative self-talk. Oh, I'm so stupid, right? Nobody likes me. You know, we know kids, you know, I, oh, you know, parent, kids say to the parent, you don't love me anymore, right? But imagine at an age-appropriate level, you were taught to think in a rational way. No mind reading, no fortune telling, no catastrophizing. You know, you were taught nobody likes me. Well, where's the evidence nobody likes you? That person likes you over there. The teacher likes you. Your, um, your family, your, your, your pets, right? I mean, even, even something like that. Um, imagine a person using choice theory and identifying their needs for love and belonging and fun um, and, and how to get those needs met. Think of all the problems that could have been avoided. Just think of your own life when you were a kid or a teenager. All the stress and anxiety and self-doubt and, and insecurity. Imagine if all of that, or at least a lot of that, was minimized and reduced because you thought more positively. You had resilience. You were more optimistic. Um, you were able to identify what needs weren't being met and how to meet them. Um, you could have avoided so much pain and suffering. And for those of you that are parents, by the way, there are uh, uh, books, for example, Martin Seligman, who did um, Learned Optimism and Authentic Happiness, wrote a book called The Optimistic Child. Um, William Glasser talked about will, uh, parents and children for uh, choice theory and reality therapy. Um, in CBT, most of the authors wrote books about, uh, about everything. They wrote about couples, you know, relationship couples, um, dealing with teenagers, uh, children, um, even um, corporate an organization. So you can definitely find books on um, helping children to develop ways of thinking, interacting, um, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-acceptance, self-love, being resilient, being optimistic. But again, I would love to bring these into the schools. I was a teacher for a while and I tried to bring these into the schools. No, no one was interested. Um, this was before COVID. Um, and had they learned a lot of these skills, I, I just imagine how much more resilient uh, students would have been. Um, but, you know, so, so now they're talking about it now, and I'm wondering um, how much of it is virtue signaling. Just like with corporate, you know, I did some series on corporate wellness. We got to help the mental health and, and, and our workers, and I, I'm wondering how much of that is really virtue signaling versus real. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to make this little video and the idea that about incorporating these techniques into the schools, I don't know if any of you know teachers or parent teacher associations, or even if you're parents yourself and you're disinterested in helping your child or teen uh, develop these skills. Um, the booklet that I wrote, uh, it's on Amazon, um, and I think I'll put the link in, is about helping teachers incorporate these concepts into their lesson plans in an organic way. Um, you can just seamlessly um, bring them into the lesson, any lesson, by just asking a couple of questions that, that identify distorted thinking and um, uh, getting the needs met. Um, there may be one or two lessons that you might want to give the students on CBT and choice theory and positive psychology just so they know they have a frame of reference. But you can seamlessly, after that, um, add them to the lesson plan without really changing the lesson plan to any degree uh, at all. And I give a, a sample lesson plans for every major subject. So anyway, I just wanted to share this with you and I hope you found this a little beneficial. I hope you can appreciate if young kids were able to learn these techniques when they were young, um, from preschool all the way through college, and if corporations brought them into the corporate world. You know, and then if parents did them, I mean, you know, these could be ways of thinking that when your parents raise you, when you go to school, in the corporate world, um, just, just, I think it would just be a better, healthier way to, to live and, and help people with, deal with stress and anxiety and depression and imposter syndrome and procrastination and learning them at a young age. So anyway, I think, I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time. Thanks.